We've been spending a lot of time on slopes and lines, and you may remember that parallel lines are two lines with the same slope. There's actually a lot more to it than that, though. We can use parallel lines for angle geometry, too. In this lesson, we'll go over angle measurements, transversals, vertical angles, and corresponding angles. Here, we have two parallel lines. A straight line that intersects two parallel lines is a transversal. This transversal has now created eight new angles. These angles are vertical and corresponding angles. Vertical angles are across from one another and always equal. Angles 2 and 3 in our figure are vertical angles. So if angle 2 has a measure of 50 degrees, so does angle 3. Corresponding angles are in the same relative position on parallel lines crossed by a transversal and are congruent. Corresponding angles are also congruent, meaning they have equal measures, like angles 2 and 6. Since angle 2 is 50 degrees, so is angle 6. We know that corresponding and vertical angles are always congruent and that all straight lines add up to 180 degrees. So, if we know the measurement of just one of the angles in this figure, we can solve for the rest. Since we know that the measures of angle 1 and 2 must add up to 180 degrees, and we know that angle 2 is 50 degrees, then we can write a simple equation to find angle 1. Angle 1 plus 50 degrees equals 180 degrees. Subtracting 50 from both sides, we get angle 1 is equal to 130 degrees. Labeling our vertical angles, angle 3 is 50 degrees and angle 4 is 130. Since angles 5 through 8 are corresponding angles, we now have the measurement for every angle in this figure. Just a few pieces of information made solving for eight angles relatively painless. It works just as well if you're working with two transversals. Let's try this out on a problem similar to what you can expect on the test. In the figure, line L is parallel to line M, and line P is parallel to line Q. Y equals, our answer choices are A, 45, B, 75, C, 90, and D, 135. All we need to do is apply the rules we just practiced. Since we know that lines P and Q are parallel, line L is the transversal of those two lines. And since lines L and M are parallel, line P is the transversal of those lines. The corresponding angle to X is the angle just above Y, as both are in the same relative position. Because x and 3x are on the same line, we know that they have to add up to 180 degrees. 3x plus x is equal to 180, or 4x equals 180. Solve for x by dividing both sides by 4, we get that x equals 45. This means that we can mark angle x as 45 degrees, as well as its three corresponding angles. Now, looking at the bottom intersection, the angle above y corresponds with x, which means that y corresponds with angle 3x. Since x is 45 degrees, 3x, or 3 times 45, is 135 degrees. So, we can mark angle y, angle 3x, and all corresponding angles as 135 degrees. Since x and y are on the same line, they should add up to 180. Let's check this. Substituting 45 in for x, we get that y plus 45 is equal to 180, or that y is equal to 135. Looking at our answer choices, d is 135. Circle it because that's the right answer. Parallel lines with transversals really are amazing. Their rules make it possible to solve the seemingly impossible. You know what is impossible? Acing the SAT without studying. So get to it.